And thank you for staying with us. I want to let you know about the Narrative Justice Project. It's a tactical response from the Wakeman Agency to the continual misrepresentation and underrepresentation of people of color in the media. The goal is to bring equality to media as well as representation and also ensuring the inclusion of diverse voices from across communities of color. And here now to share a little bit more about this is the, uh, I should say, the CEO of the Wakeman Agency, Vanessa Wakeman. And uh, Vanessa, good to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here today. Thank you. And, I, you know, I'll be honest, um, you know, part of my reason of why I am a journalist today is because I remember back in the day a guy by the name of Max Robinson. And uh, he was on ABC News and probably was the only African-American that I saw and became my impetus of wanting to get into journalism. Um, but your passion and what you're working on right now is really addressing just that issue. So uh, talk to us a little bit about that. So uh, I have been a uh, consumer of news since I was a child. Like it was a requirement in my home that we be informed <laughs> and sort of know what was going on. And throughout the years as a um, just an observer, I noticed the sort of different ways that different people were represented in the media. Fast forward, um, when I opened my social change agency back in 2003, and we did PR projects and worked on a number of different types of communications, I recognized um, just how different the coverage of people of color were relative to their white counterparts. And so the language that is used, um, the sort of positioning, the victim shaming, there are all of these sort of nuances in the way the, uh, the media is sort of shaping public perception. And I just wanted to figure out what, if anything, we could do. And so I worked on this idea of the Narrative Justice Project to bring free media training into communities of color. And what I'm hoping to do is just give people like basic information about how to have more control over the narrative and also to understand that we do have power and we do have a say in how our stories are told. Yeah. And our stories being told is very important. Sometimes the stories get taken way out of way out of context. What advice do you give for people if you're trying to put something towards media in protecting that? Because, yeah, we could give you A and it can turn out to be B. And as a journalist myself, I know that it's 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 really in the hands of the journalists, the editors and the producers and the directors. Well, I think, um, I think that's a great question. And I think the answer is sort of twofold. One is to sort of focus on specifically what you want the media to know. And so sometimes we're giving too much information, too much background, too much future state. Uh, we like people to think about like, what is the issue? What is the solution? And what is the action? And so we do some framing around that. And then the other thing is to hold the media accountable. If a story comes out that doesn't include the correct information, if there is misinformation, to sort of reach out to the news um, um, to the news director, to the news desk and say, hey, that's not the truth. The truth is this, to sort of use social media and other non-traditional forms to make sure that our voices are heard. Um, I don't think, particularly in this moment of racial reckoning, uh, that we should feel that we just have to take whatever is stayed, stated about us and what's shared, and that we have the right to be able to tell our stories in a way that best reflect our communities. And when we look at COVID-19, we see a lot of different things, particularly in our community. We see protesting. We see police brutality. We see voices rising up against injustice. We see the death of civil rights icons and leaders. If ever is a time uh, when that voice needs to be made known, I guess now is the time. Talk to us about COVID-19 and how this has impacted you. So we uh, originally had the plans to roll out Narrative Justice Project to 20 cities for 2020. We're super excited about that, had a number of community partners in New York, and we were launching in Harlem. And a couple of days before the training, um, the sort of threat of COVID began to grow, and we were really concerned about people's well-being. And so we decided to halt the training, but still wanted to think about how can we do this? Like, are, will we even have more of a, um, a demand to be able to sort of shift the way stories are told. And so with a little bit of a pivot on our end and certainly not a perfect solution, we were able to take a two and a half hour um, in-person training and transition it to an hour and 15 minute online training. So that means that we're giving a lot of information in a small amount of time. Um, but again, looking at what's happening with COVID, the way uh, you know this 
uh, is hitting uh, communities of color disproportionately. Thinking about like the um, the racially motivated murders over the last couple of months that have really sort of shifted the climate and conversation about race in our country. Wanting to make sure that people had whatever we could contribute to help them have these conversations. Wanting to push that out, and so people um, are able to sort of take the training and walk away with just some general resources and tools and an understanding of how to work with the media. Yeah, yeah. I know part of your training includes a, a few things. I want to talk about some of the things that you that you talk about. You talk about um, uh, gaining the attention of media in challenges of crisis uh, within the community, identifying the key messages and facts to share with the media. Um, walk me through that piece right there, because I think that's where uh, a lot becomes problematic in some form, because when people share the wrong information or don't put the right information out, somebody else is left to shift the narrative. Yes, so I think there are two things there. The first is that oftentimes people don't know that they can just contact the news desk to say, hey, this is what's happening. That doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna get coverage, but based on severity and the urgency of the issue, as you know, um, there's a possibility. And so when I think about some of these um, sort of like the protests and again, these murders, recently we've seen how impactful sort of that storytelling can be. If we think about the Ahmaud Aubrey case, it was, I think, 10 weeks from his murder before it made it to mainstream media. And I can't help but wonder um, if, you know, there was a family member that sort of um, knew sort of how to engage the media, would we have been able to sort of create more mainstream attention for this and possibly change the trajectory around what happened um, with his, um, his murderers. The, the other part of that is also thinking about uh, when a child is missing, there is actual data that points to uh, Black and Latinx children that are missing do not get the same level of attention as white children. And so wanting people to understand that you can contact the media, you can send a photo, um, you can sort of um, get the media to support you in trying to find your loved one. And so these, just all of this information that people don't have readily available, we're certainly not looking for folks to sort of become publicists per se, but the general awareness of how the media is supposed to um, be in many ways a partner to communities, a partner in sort of, um, you know, issues of crisis or sort of urgent situations and wanting people to understand that we have the right to hold people accountable for like what stories are told in our environments and communities. Yeah, telling those stories and being able to tell those stories are very vital. Um, I think that so many times the stories being altered uh, and shifted is what we see. And it's important to you know share our stories and also at the same time be able to uh, find our voice. So for somebody who's out there watching right now saying, listen, how do I, how do I take part? Um, and who are the services available to? Why don't you just share? Sure. So the services are specifically for people of color. So if you self-identify as a person of color and you're um, over the age of 18, you are welcome to participate in the training. Right now it's happening online on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Uh, you can text 474747 with the keyword my voice and you can get a link to registration or you can go to our website thewakemanagency.com uh, go to the narrative justice project page and you can sign up there all right i want to make sure that people have that opportunity to do that and as we continue to move forward in COVID 19 and through navigating this reopening i know that uh your organization your work is gonna be very important in helping to shape the narrative, particularly when we talk about social justice and when we talk about really how uh, communities of color are being portrayed in COVID-19 and amidst this uh, social unrest. Before we leave, I'll give you a quick second to say, uh, you know, your final words. My final words are, um our stories are, I want to just let everyone know that our stories are important, that they deserve to be heard, and they deserve to be told by us. And so we are hoping that this moment when we're having all these conversations about diversity, about equity, about inclusion, about racism, that people feel empowered to sort of speak up and speak out about their experiences. And on the flip side of that is I also want people to know that uh, people of color need to be seen for their humanity. And I'm hoping that our project will help to sort of um, begin some of that journey. Yeah, yeah. And thank you so much. That's It's a very vital work. And uh, Vanessa, thank you so much. I think it's much needed. And I can go on with the whole show just on that all by itself. Thank you much, Vanessa. Thank you for having me.
All righty, Vanessa Wakeman, our guest here on Open Now. Listen, if you want more information about Vanessa Wakeman, visit her website at thewakemanagency.com. And you can follow them on social media at Wakeman Agency.